Okay, so here we are looking at the side sword I got. Proto rapier, perhaps. I'm not sure if I call it an early rapier or a side sword for sure, but since the blade is a fairly wide cutting blade, I'm going to go with side sword. Anyway, just to show you the innards, I will unscrew the nut. as is a threaded pommel, which I don't really like on swords, but it does make it nice to show what's inside. The pommel is fairly beefy, and it is solid. I think one this large in history would probably be, uh, you know, hollow, but that would make one ending rightly of a man quite possible. And we have this grip, which you can tell is not well done, as a lot of windless grips aren't. And sometimes what I recommend is if you're not going to take a sword apart to fill it with like sawdust or sometimes scrap paper or whatever in epoxy or super glue or something and kind of fill in the uh, gaps as you jam it back on and it will stay put. Um, see it's got, I don't know if you'll see it on camera, but it's got a little bit of a seam. Yeah, there you kind of see it in light. It's a little bit of a seam where the sections are, which is kind of sloppy. It's not too visible. It's a little sloppy in the fact that it's, uh, you can see it's kind of a ridge. But at the same time, since the handle is round-ish on this sword, a little oval, but kind of round, it does give you a reference that you can feel with your fingers. Next is the guard coming off. And it, as you can tell, is fairly beefy. Not super heavy, but those uh, finger rings especially are nice and thick. I would doubt anything much would get through that. I hadn't noticed one before when I was looking at side swords in history that had this double upper ring. Sometimes you see an upper ring and a lower ring down here or other things, but I've never seen a slightly upward canted ring and a secondary ring. But this one, since it sits higher up and has an angle, if a blade slides down, it kind of gives it some uh, kind of a catch there, I guess, when you're binding to help hold it is what I'm thinking the idea is. Well, the main point of me taking this part is so you can see the tang, which goes from the actual edges. The guard sits right here. And then, well, the upper part of the guard, the upper ring sit here, and then the actual quillions cross is right here. So this part looks like it'd be the full length of the tang. It's almost as wide. They cut out a little bit. The actual tang, but you can see the actual tang is not welded. I don't see any welds. It gets around at the end, but I don't actually see a weld point. This is turning the blade sideways. You can see it gets thicker, but um, it transitions to the thicker. So it doesn't honestly look like a weld. I don't see any, I don't know if you've ever seen on camera, but I don't see anywhere where there's an obvious weld point. So I don't know how exactly they transitioned that and made it roundish or welded it without a weld mark but somehow it became round and screw on pommel and such but it's a fairly wide tang if we take my thumb there it's about as wide as my thumb almost so it's a pretty beefy fairly thick tang for a windlass but i thought i'd show you that because some of the swords they've been producing recently especially in the past few years since they started the battle cry line have definitely stepped up their game in quality i feel and in balance, honestly. Um, just want to show that as part of this video.